I'm going to look at the body measurement uh, data again and I'm going to use this data to look at uh, normality. So the easiest way of looking at normality is just to create a histogram and to visually inspect it to see if it's normally distributed. So there's two ways of doing a histogram. You can go to descriptive statistics and explore. Uh, I'm just going to do this for a single uh, variable which is going to be for well, actually I'm going to do it for two I'm going to do it for head and thigh size if I go to plots and if I click on histogram and I can leave that together and go okay so I'll get a histogram for thigh size there's a bit of a gap but it looks generally normally distributed and this is histogram for head size. Uh, here, because n is quite small, it doesn't look perfectly normally distributed, although the box plot is more convincing. The median is absolutely in the center of the interquartile range, compared to for the thigh one, where the median is not in the center because of these unusual values. So normality is a bit tricky to look at uh, in just on the histogram for small sets of data. So if I double click on it, I can put a distribution curve over it. So that's putting the normal distribution curve over the set of data. Now, do I think that is convincingly normally distributed? It seems reasonable. And if I had a larger set of data, that would become much clearer. So actually let's open another set of data so let's open the expanded student data the expanded student height data this is a good data set because it contains a lot of uh, student heights about over 600 so if i go to analyze and do script just put in height as the dependent variable i want to do the histogram not the stem and leaf and I just want to display the plot, I go OK. This is a much more convincing normal distribution, although there are outliers, which are very clear when you look at the box plot. Now, apart from doing it through the explore function, what I could have done is go to chart builder. Uh, it always puts up this dialogue, so I'm going to wait, don't show this dialogue again. This is to check that you've defined your categorical variables correctly. Uh, because if you don't, then you could end up doing the wrong plot of the wrong kind of thing. So what I want to do is a histogram. So I click, so here is the chart builder wizard. So here you can choose what kind of charts you're doing. So I want to do a histogram. It's just a regular histogram. I've just got a single plot so I want to do height because that's the data set that's open at the minute so height goes along the x-axis what it will then do is put histogram so this means it's going to count the frequency so it's a simple histogram of whatever it is you want to measure press OK and I get exactly the same histogram as I got before. In this case, it's just got a bit of a scaling difference. Now, what I could do, and you could see from that graph menu, so it's then more complicated types of histogram that you could do. So there's this nice one here, which allows you to do two, uh, to do what's called a population pyramid to compare two things to one another. So you could do that if you were going to uh, split based on gender. The problem is with this data set I've got three genders, so if I actually do it, it will fail. But you do these kind of histograms, so what you'll get is a histogram on the left and a histogram of right, on the right which you can compare to each other. So it's called a population pyramid uh, count because it's done between the two genders and comparing ages to each other. That's the standard usage for this particular plot. If I go back to my and my measurement data, go back to these, and I go to graph chart builder. So I go down to histogram, drop my 
histogram. So I want to do a histogram of head size. So head goes into the x-axis, press OK. Then in my output, I get the histogram of head size that you saw before. It's changed slightly the scale of it. What might sometimes happen is they change the bins. So this is the ranges which you count the frequencies in. Different programs will give you different bin widths, and that's why histograms will look different between different programs and different analysis. That doesn't mean that one is right or one is wrong. You have to pick your ranges where you're counting your data, which fit with the data that you've got, based on how many data points you've got and how much spread you've got.